What were you told? Like, if you didn't speak English, I would say, this is how you say this, and I would tell you something entirely okay, different. Okay, so in English, what did they tell you what it was? <laughs> the fried egg is on the floor. The fried egg is on the floor. <laughs> okay, Milos doesn't have a clue. Okay. I don't know either. I think Merry Christmas is like Freudene Weihnachten. Freudene Weihnachten. Yeah, I know Merry Christmas then. Um, anyway, it's not just about what we know about international languages. Surprisingly, this is this isn't about that. This is about Rainbow Six Siege. It's also no German being spoken by any of okay. these teams. Yeah, no. Um, neither is there any Flores being spoken by Flores. Thatcher is gone as well. That's not the most uncommon thing. Okay, here's a point of curiosity. App is... I think attacker repick is going to be more pertinent on a map like this that we know very well than a lot of the ones that we've already seen. True or false? Uh, true. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> do you want more than that? No, <laughs> I do. I do. I think. Uh, yeah. Give me. Give me some more. No, because um, the, the, there is a lot of pocket strategies on maps that have been around for a very long time, um, and and droning out and spotting those weaknesses gives you the opportunity to completely repick your entire attack to go for those pocket strategies. If you're on for Sky, if you're on for Theme, if you're on for Border, those maps haven't been played for a long while. So it might be that there's, you know, not that many pocket strategies or the confidence to run them for these teams. So if, if we're headed towards a clubhouse, which has been in for a very, very long time right now. Everybody has something up their sleeves which they would be willing to try. And and who knows, we might see some of that coming through. If we're talking about normal uh, attacker repicks for like normal rounds, I'm not quite sure if we see too much of it. Um, because it's always going to be a map where you need two hard breachers, at least. Uh, but, and this was, this sort yeah. of ties, this ties into my point, this ties into my conversation is, when we first got the hard breach gadget and we thought about the ways that they can really add a new level to your approaches, maps like Club, where you had to have two hard destruction and where hard destruction was pretty much always the attack of bands, it became this moment of, well, maybe this is where we can see some growth. And I don't know, it's still early doors and days, and I hate to give him credit, but Parker uh, nope. pretty much said, let's yep. give it some time and see how it fits and settles before we make some in big judgments on attacker epic but i would like to see how it grows on something that it's not that it's stale but it's that it's very well known yeah for sure i mean we always uh, have the opportunity to go back into the statistics and see how much success was gained from some of these repicks here as the opening in the jacuzzi wall will be made first lily is quite close as well but i believe oh, no, he's going to start opening it up now and should have both the anchor points are gone. It's number two that's just holding out. He was waiting for the bottom to be opened up, and he's in a tight angle like that. Might actually take out his home neutral, but there's still fine, still fine. Was hoping for Light to actually go prone and, and follow the line, but he didn't, so wasn't gifted the opportunity there to actually pick up a kill. Yeah, it was well played there. He kind of maybe expected a bit of a strike to come around from that side, so he just opened that last bit with a bit of range, had the confirmation as the bullets start to break their way through. Maybe potentially expected just a bit of damage to be done to the jammer instead. But here, with that wall open, and with Mary, you opened as well. Shin striking from a knock through on the wall of dirt. Just got the repelling player there. And it's a bit of a run out because it adds now some danger for that diffuser carrier of Habana up on Jacuzzi. They've got to be cautious of this. And they're going to try and have some cover from Lily here to offer all the support that they can. But the longer they're here, the more likely they are going to suffer again. Of course, there's still some x cars left, and they will be used now to open up into the bathroom. There's also a very close door here as number two just slips past. Barely stays alive here, but are now well aware of the fact that number two is inside that gym area. Not quite sure if we saw any of the others there. That's a failed attempt of locking down CCTV. A little damage done to all these players, and it's a pretty far as now start coming through. It's like that is being suffered by a jump out of number two. It's pure chaos coming in. That Fav is throwing here at the side of Fnatic. It's only up to Lily now. He finds the very first. There is an injure on the other side as well. Afro and Shin both on low HP. Type on the only one on full, and that is the one who needs needs to make the difference here. Both of them can literally take a single bullet or a bit of shrapnel and lose their life as a result. And as Lily seems to be aware, it's a C4 that comes out and closes it off. Fav with a very chaotic first round win. 
I quite like the way Fav played that because they didn't let Fnatic get comfortable. They sort of felt the approach was coming. They obviously had the chance to spray through immediately on that first fight there onto the Jacuzzi wall itself. But then the rotation round onto Dirt. The spray from that point onwards, they kept themselves moving. They kept themselves mobile. And they're a good aggressive team. They're a team that can sort of connect the dots with that pressure. They can bring themselves around to find a fight wherever they kind of dictate they want to find the fight. That was their sort of start. Fnatic, they, as I said, got a little bit stuck outside on Jacuzzi. They were trying to play things by the book, but by the time they'd started to read it, it had already been sort of ripped apart by Fav. Ripped apart indeed. They tried to hold on these long angles, but... I mean, you had one ready up onto the CCTV breach, onto the balcony, but failed to actually lend the shots that were necessary to shut them down from using that window. And yes, you dealt a lot of damage to both of them, but it's not going to be mattering in the end when the Nitro pops through. See one of the walls that has been reinforced the other way around? That is to bounce back any potential grenades that well, are attempt to be tossed in. Um, it is it is making it slightly harder for the attackers to get it in properly and might actually cost some utility piece or two at least solve and fix some time there. So that is why that one is reinforced in a different way compared to the other two. Fnatic is starting their approach right here by opening up these windows and with that castle barricades as well they seem to be aware of the fact that there must be some roamers up on that top floor because otherwise those castle barricades do not make much sense. So a bit of a steadier approach here from Fnatic. A roster that's still not technically in its final form. We'll be playing this first stage in that sort of position with Jibby Sue trying to run the gauntlet of that final fifth spot here. To be fair, he had a great first showing in the earlier day, or a better first showing than a lot of other roster fill-ins. I guess it's seeing if he can bring that fifth edge here to a Fnatic that's going for a little bit of a quicker cleanup. That C4 doesn't catch Mariu. He's able to find his way through the rotation, heard the rip and the pull, and now he's got a bit of an angle he can work with down all the way through onto the site itself. Mario, of course, who hasn't, hasn't had the best first game that first round also won't really sit well with him there. So really hoping he's going to be able to slowly work himself into this game here and make sure that he's going to have a good impact. Another C4 tossed up. It's going to give a direct angle into the motorcycle hatch. Nothing they will be able to find from that, however, as everybody's fallen back already. Fav playing very safely inside the side. Still Shin in the kitchen. Uh, looking with that cardiac sensor. No more C-Force to guide, however. So it should turn into some pure gunfights, if that's the case. Ramu is on a flank here. Will be drawn out, I believe. They might be aware of his position as they're hunting him down with two separate men. Light holding the rotation out. Mary is trying to put some pressure down, and surely they're hoping to flush him out of this position. It's so much time, though. He's wasting it all a minute on. He runs out. He doesn't quite get the full connection there. Mary Yu comes off the drone at the right second. Went for a read, but number two finds Lily. In the meantime, they rotated their way up, got the drop down onto the bathroom with the support of Shin of the Pulse, and he pulls back. 45 seconds in the kitchen hatch, I believe, is still in one piece. It's clawed as well. And the Maverick won't have the time to try and burn his way through it. So instead, they're just going to have to try and force themselves from the open moto hatch, which, to be fair, is still a big piece and part of the play and the Pressure that comes through onto Blue Eura. He's got a shoulder on the left and the right, so he doesn't quite have the clean entrance he might want here. Afro is going to restack and step himself up as Typon gets one. There's a free pickup from Afro. They've dropped themselves down into Moto with the other second held up on the smoke on the main. A great take from Chibisu onto the first, but only a handful of seconds. The flash close, locked off by Typon. And Light now stuck on pipes with less than 10 seconds, but he doesn't see any of it. Fav take their second. Second round, where Fav is completely in control of whatever is happening. And maybe a little bit less chaos here. But yeah, Fnatic struggling with that kitchen hatch. They were out there to realize, okay, we cannot mev it. It's quite dangerous as well to mev in kitchen with the potential of C4s to be tossed up. And yes, of course, they already did use to, but you never know if there's something else still in pocket. And that is where you're, uh, you're missing, for example, a Thermite or a Selma of Ace, which you can place on the soft wall right next to it and try and open it up like that. I believe the Selma is a little bit better for it as it's harder to destroy. But of course, you also need two of them compared to just a single exothermic charge. Now, Fav 2-0 up, headed towards CCTV next. 
which back in the day would have been the primary bomb site for many teams. However, due to how easy it has become to open up the main CCTV wall and, and then all that the attackers need to do is just get garage control. We're not seeing it as much as we normally would. Now, bar stage also has been reworked, or bar stock to bar stage, we have to say. Uh, we're starting to see some play here and there, but still not really to the same extent as the basement, for example. Garage locked, loaded, and ready to see if it can try and hold on. They obviously have the mute jammers as well. They're stacking themselves up with as much denial as possible. But to be fair, Vav have lent in to the approach of Fnatic, and we saw it even there on the round. Sure, the run out of Strip was to waste time, and mm -hmm. he knew he was numbered at that point. He has to be the leading on the pressure because maybe you can still offer a bit of surprise. Yeah, he's in a similar position once again, but it's knowing when to react and knowing the response that came from number two, who stepped in previously... Ooh, there's the knock and there's the pull back. Didn't quite get the player on the repel, but they didn't quite hear the punch by the sounds of it. No, so it depends if someone else is going to go back into the repel. It could be quite dangerous here. But of course, they are in a very safe spot on the jacuzzi up here. Not really yet under any threat of number two. But he is still on a roam, though, so that could still be problematic in the end here as he's just swinging around the corner left and right, just trying to find something or at least pull away some of that attention. So um, we're going to have the mute in there, Afro, playing a little bit more safely. You can see it already. The wall has been opened up a minute into the round, and it's already long gone. An impact used from Yura as well to uh, make sure that the wall has opened up. All that they need to do now is get control of the garage. Afro? Will be spotted out though, so I think he will be forced to fall back. But for now, he's still trying to hold on to the gym as long as he can. Oh, oh there's a cheeky that. take. Afro's going for one, looks for the second, oh, and finds get it. That too. A huge drop there onto Mario with a tough to control gun. Lily, they're trying to pick up the pieces when they can't quite get the third. Chibisu has the back line there and is able to at least stem the flow and the blood, but still, big work done off to the side. Now, with just over a minute left, they have some caution to be paid to the potential of the rotate up underneath, but number two has actually pulled himself away. They've realized how much limiting work that they've done. They've obviously been able to get one wall open, but without garage control, it's a very awkward approach. And number two is going to make sure that they do not have a clean way through to the bottom of red as well. So they're going to have to hope that the Habana can start to hit some pressure here. Shin is able to at least solidify the control on the back line. Both now in front of them stacked up. The CC window, well, they know that you're there and now you're not there for very long. The diffuser is cold. Taipon finishes it off with the catch on the impact and leaves Lily once again staring down the barrel of a smoke canister as the only Fnatic player left on this approach. That to catch a close player, but here, 20 seconds. And there's really not anything he can do as we find ourselves looking at a third Fav round. So far, Fav indeed absolutely deadly and ripping Fnatic all the way apart. Nothing really they can do here. And Lily hoping to pick up one. Will not find any either. Taipon gets that final kill. It's Fav now 3-0 up. And they reset their rotation. They're allowed to go back towards the gym and bedroom to see if they can find success yet once again. This is where Fnatic can start to adapt, though. They have seen the setup. They know how they play. It was a lot of chaos that was coming through. Uh, Fav, they are well-versed in each other. They have a long history of playing against each other. So they have a good read, and, and the victories have sort of been back and forth between these two teams as well on the national sort of scale and international scale. So it's, you know, you, you can't quite cut as much of that. That was so... I was going to say, I wasn't supposed to get the first one. I knew exactly where he was, and then he gets a second as well. That is just filthy. You shouldn't, shouldn't have been allowed to do that. Either way, well done by them. 3 two, zero here. And we're headed towards the gym in the bedroom. You see the castle again coming out. It's going to be uh, fortifying that first floor a little bit there. Closing off pool. Might have been closing off towards the main entrance as well. You see how many caster barricades? All oh, four have been used. So some of the windows, some of the doors. As the last bulletproof is deployed as well, there is going to be some form of information to help them as well. If we're just quickly looking at the operator lineup, I mean, we do have a sledge, we do have the Xkairos, and those are being used as well currently to open up those two windows that have been castle barricaded off. So nothing uh, really to worry about here for the side of Fnatic in terms of utility. 
Fnatic, what are you going to do differently here? What's the potential approach that might change things up? Apparently, the eye is onto the CC side. Yuri has been able to get himself in underneath onto Lounge. Might find a fight sooner than he expects. There is obviously a player playing on the connection with Shin even deeper. Droned out, revealed. Shin's going to pull himself apart. They know about this loose play game. They know about the roams, and they know about the pressure that they like to apply, and that's generally Yura's job right now, is to ensure that none of these loop-de-loop -loop rotations can come through. They're still locked in inside with some sense and stability around that bar and stage end, but, well, there's the chance on a pressure type on. Doesn't quite get the catch. Lily is straight out of there. Still giving him any opportunity here to uh, to trade out instantly as the hatch opens up. And well, smart by them. There's no need to challenge that currently as Fav is slowly being hammered back towards their site. It's about 100 seconds left on the clock. It's plenty of time for Fnatic to do the work they need to do. And as they've cleared out CCTV and Cash, they can now start working onto the construction side. However, there is going to be that big issue of logistics. There's a player in there. There is a rotation in it as well. And even though they have opened up the hatch, it doesn't ex exactly stop them there as a Nitro tossed quite early. He's not going to be able to find anybody. As all Fnatic members have gone onto the balcony at that point. Spotted it out now. No one is below. The ping is coming through. And I believe Yuri is being sent out to go for the hunt. Wow. Once again, we're looking at time wasted. But at this point, nobody has been taken out. And... Here is Shin, but does Shin know that pressure's coming through? He sure does now. He can no longer play that hatch position. He still has, obviously, the pocket C4 and can try and cause some destruction here and just pull it out. But the longer he's there, not dealt with, the more danger he'll be, especially now they don't have that body advantage. Type on. He's found one. He wants to see if he can find a second, but it's Afro that finds Lily. And here, once again, things are starting to slip away from Fnatic's approach. Mary pulls off the angle at the worst oh, the possible dropped. time. There is one more for the trouble. You're uh, at least make sure it's not a flawless on this gym bedroom take. They went for a slightly different approach, but once again, the approach has suffered. Their slow pace is something that Fav are so happy to lean into and just pull bodies apart, and they do it so well. I don't necessarily think that it was super slow pace for Fnatic. I mean, they did get quite a bit of control all the way up to Constriction with about, a, you know, 1 minute 40 left on the clock. So they did quite well up until that point. As soon as they needed to push past the cash room, it's when it all started to fall apart here. Typon locks it in with the very final kill. Finds the Zofia and locks in their fourth round for Fav. And they are leading quite cleanly so far. Round five. And we are back to the basement. We go. Church and Arsenal. Fab again bringing that Cade. That is just a problem factor for Fnatic. They need to deal with it. And they bring six grenades now. As you can see, Yana, Maverick, and Sledge. Of course, there is going to be a repick phase. They could swap out some of those grenades. But I think some of those need to be used to get rid of the Electro class. Otherwise, you're just not going to open up that kitchen hatch. Because you saw a lot of them focusing around it last uh, last round, but they weren't able to do anything with it, and and there was just a lot a lot of time wasted in that round specifically. Um, so I'm wondering to see how they're going to be dealing with this current setup here. It has been a great performance from Fab, and I think that's the thing about it is. They have a back line that is solid. You're looking at Taipan, obviously, in that position. You're looking at Shin, who is sort of providing all that intel to number two, Afro and Ramu, who are sort of getting a full stretch of the legs. They're trying to find these engagements elsewhere. They're looking to lean into Fnatic's approach, as I've said. But the fact that they have a back line where neither of them have died yet, I yeah. think says so much about the work that's being done elsewhere. The support structure and the sort of lines and meeting the fights when they expect to. Number two, what is he thinking about doing this time? Door is not prepped, so he's not going to be able to just go for a run out here. He might have just been giving some call outs that he heard them repel up that way. So he might be uh, letting everybody know, hey, they are coming from the jacuzzi site. Shin will be confirming this rumor as he quickly went into the heartbeat sensor. He's going for a spot now, though. Spots, too. This might be a C4 that they want to toss up somewhere, but there's no way they're going to get it out there. So I'm not really sure why two players are currently inside strip. I mean, sure, the information is being gained. Oh, he's going to run out the door, isn't run he? Run out the door. Run he's out the door over the top. The Light. drones, though. Oh, the drones might have not seen them. 
They're going to call it off, though. They're not going to go for that, for the plan that he originally had. And as Ramu opens it up, but it's the second kill for him as well. What is he doing there? He just ran out. Jim got two kills. Mario didn't even watch his side. And now it's only three up for the side of Fnatic. And I was going to make the point, there's five kills in total on Fnatic. Now there's 23 on the side of five. It's definitely a big gap in between them right now. That's the point personified here as Yura is locked out by number two. Back onto the site itself. He's causing some problems. They've had to go for a bit of a retake and clear over the top. They have time, but they don't really have much else. They've lost, obviously. The Maverick. Those hatches, they're going to stay closed. The ones that are potentially already clawed up. And I think pipes in that church wall was done before as well. And it just sort of shows how Fava play in this game. They're so happy to fully extend themselves over the stretch of this map. And they trust that intel, that gathering up, that doubling down of all the combination of players. And they still have a C4 in pocket. Shin might see if they can try and lead number two's arm here before they suffer any more damage. Four of the grenades have gone. There's two left. Lily has one, and I believe he just used it towards the church double door. They're not going to try and open up the kitchen hatch this time around. However, as a small rotate is coming through, it seems like blue is going to be their point of ingress here. As another grenade is being tossed in to kill the uh, bulletproof. It's already been taken care of. So the player on board is that will be receiving it. Rotates, however, as Afro is quick to slip out and digs himself in deep near the oil pit here. It's Shibisu that now moves in from that main door. Here spots out that punch hole, knows that he could have been seen, and now finds some smoke canister. He gets picked up instead. Lily finds one, but they're both on low HP. Lily and Yura both can take only one single bullet, but Lily returns one first. A two and three, but seven seconds into the diffuser, all the way on the other side of that basement here means they need to go for frags, and that is not going that way. Fav are 5 0 up. It's just sort of looking like the story. I think I was the only one that predicted. Did you predict Fav? I did predict Fav. I was doubting. I was like, I mean, Fnatic showed some good stuff. They Fav did. did as well. But I think Fav have experience against this roster. Um, and I think, it, it, you know, as they sort of said, Fnatic are a very good roster. But if there is going to be a challenge for this new Fnatic roster, it's going to be against teams that know them very well. And yep. there is probably not many other teams in this sort of environment that know that ex-Guts roster as well as Fav do. They've played against each other for a very, very long time. And in sure, there's been changes, there's been tweaks, and there's obviously been new players that have come in over the past six to 12 months, like Mariu, but there's also changes to come. And this is where those sort of plays, that sort of momentum is have know it. And they're proving it. They're proving it by the positions they're taking up. They're proving it by how they're leading in. They seem to have an idea of even how the drone game likes to be played by yeah. this roster. And they're just punishing it time and time again. They definitely are. And Fav is definitely putting up a statement here that they are looking to contest for that top four position and hope to go to a major as well. Get some of that international experience against European, North American teams and also the Latam ones, of course. Those windows are being opened up yet again. Fnatic is looking to desperately find something on their attacks here. Of course, yes, historically, it is a defense-sided game. Not really working out so far, though, because they need to get one or two rounds on the attack anyway, Fnatic. There's only one up. Baiting. Oh, baiting. yeah, I was going to say, I think, it, it, not yeah, quite okay. sure if he... Uh... He was baiting in the C4. He knows that they play aggressive games, yeah. and, and he's keeping at arm's length. They haven't suffered from those sort of drops and deaths, and they have the drone game, which is where things are starting to fall apart from them, I think. And that's the main point of this, is those drones are rolling in ways that they're sort of expected to be. There's one of the few times, you know, we've sort of seen the pressure of the drones work against the Fav, which previously has just lent into them. It definitely has. As they now try and push on to that top floor, a minute has passed, and we have three men inside CCTV. Now they're spreading out, garage, cash up to the highway as well, but Fav is definitely playing quite some aggression onto that top floor as well. Leave two members around on that gym and bedroom area with, you know, the opportunities to fall back if they want to. Those are being cut down a little bit though, and we are playing on that bar site. As they truly want to show that they can win every... This is a new one. We can win every single side. 
Oh, yeah, it's in black and white. We're in noir now. Everything is... <laughs> we're going into an old, like, talkie. We're going into the old Rainbow Six old, feature. Just an old film from, like, yeah. the 30s. Um, but regardless of the disappearance of sound, it's the disappearance of Eura as well. Taken out there by Afro. They have those huge angles. They have the tepid scenes of the fight over the top. Ramu finds one more, and this is turning into a very sad story to match the black and white overtones here. Maybe a bit too much pathetic fallacy, Siege, but still... Fnatic still haven't been able to find a route through, and it's not going to happen over the billiards window either. Ramu swings wide, takes one more head. Meryu at least ensures it's not a flawless, as they've been able to do so many times, but still, how many have ended as a four to a three versus one? Here's one more for that list, and there's only one more that they need to secure this game at six to zero. Fav. Absolutely decimating Fnatic right here. There is nothing for them to be gained here at this moment in time. Fnatic just cannot pick up a single round. They're struggling. And now you would say they have six opportunities on the defense to try and make something happen, but th this is just six opportunities for Fav to lock it off with a 3-0. Whereas Fnatic just needs to survive if they want to grab anything out of this. And they're starting in the basement. It's a solid choice. It's... Uh, a site we have seen many, many times, and I believe is still one of the most defensive sites there is in this in in this in the game. I believe it was 64% during the sixth invitational. Now, of course, we are in APEC North with two teams who weren't present for any of the majors this year. Or the sixth invitational at that. So how much are these stats gonna be coming across? Not quite sure. Um of course, Fav has been able to put up two very solid rounds here. Actually, yeah, two very solid rounds here, which they both managed to win. And that's going to be up to Fnatic to see whether or not the 100% win rate will continue in the basement. I feel like I won, <laughs> like, with the, like, little crackle. I want, like, our comms. You know when you, like, play, like, games and you have, like, comms that's, like, crackly to make it, like, fitting of, like, the military era? Yeah, radios. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like... <laughs> now they're putting pressure on the CCTV. <laughs> Over. Over. <laughs> okay, but we're not going to cast like that, because no. that would get very annoying very quickly. But 30 seconds have passed. Fav have been able to find at least some pressure inside across two different stories of this map. They are making sure that Fnatic don't have a second to breathe. They only need one. They only need one round, one piece to start falling into their position and well I think they've pretty much got every single opening kill I don't think there's a single time that they haven't throughout this game so far so they'll see if that statistic can continue here on their first attempt to put pressure onto the site itself all of the Fnatic players pretty much are down on that width of that basement including one playing all the way off into dirt I mean, there's only eight kills on the side of Fnatic so the chance they had the opening kill very slim at this point by the way, a minute 40 left on the clock. Banshees are attempted to be taken out here by the side of Fav. They want to go quickly. It seems... Oh, look at that. Very smart. Typhon is trying to open it by standing above it and allowing Shin to fire upon it. That's why you do not have to use a grenade to get rid of it. Very smart plays coming through here from the side of Fav. Nazafro is opening up the hatch in the meantime in the motorcycle side. It's going to be Fnatic that need to hold on with everything they got. 70 seconds left on the clock. We are counting down slowly. And as the hatch now opens up, there is a point of ingress. The drones are coming in as well, but there's Mew Gemmers on that position. There's nothing really they can do. So maybe we will see a grenade to be tossed through there. It's also an evil eye high up in the corner. Both sides actually stopping these drones from going through and feeding information. So at some point, Fav will just have to execute with little to no information at all. They have rough ideas and they have these positionings, but it's going to come down to the first fight. As you said, Ramu goes for the creep down onto a blue. He's been able to crouch walk his way all the way and finds the first swings for the second. Can't get the connection. Yura, a very important take, but it triggers the approach of the rest. Typon, he's inside the site. The grenade mistimed and Light's able to swing around, take a kill. Lily gets one more. Number two is dropped. The diffuser is cold. Lily is doing some busy work now onto the church side itself. Leaves just Shin 
on the unfamiliar territory of the one versus four rather than what they've been able to flaunt before. A little bit of a misconnection. On the approach, we were there allowed the one just saw the head, but there's still a lot left to do. They're allowed one. They're allowed a couple of They're mistakes. They're allowed four, technically. But the more that Five. those happen, suddenly you might be finding yourselves on a bit of a swing down of momentum. Yeah, you want to make sure that you do not let Fnatic get into a positive flow here. If they do, they might just as well swing it back here. I mean, they are on the defense. They are capable of bringing it back. And Fav is looking like they need to shut that down as soon as they can. Fnatic is going for a cease to v cash hold. However, that is one of those most default attacks. Any team will know. Open up CCTV to the balcony wall. You grab garage control and you're good to go for a plant. What we see here from Fnatic though is an impact grenade on the default spot, which means that there needs to be a bit more movement on the side of Fav if they want to go for a plant, or they need to have lobby control to ensure themselves that no one is coming in from below to shut down their planter as it happens. And if you do it well, you should have an extra person to hold for it as well, because if you manage to get rid of the player that is on the rafters, then, you know, that is a 5v4 situation, given you do not lose anybody in a result. There's then a player you can put inside of Lounge, which is heavily defended, by the way, two serial laser gates and a banshee. So it really shows that Fnatic wants to hold on to it. They're, they're really banking into the fact that they want to go for a default plant here. So the pings are coming through on those slightly loose players. And as you said, they have the pressure and the control inside lounge. Ramu, just going to stop the jump out here. But to be honest, I don't really think that's Fnatic's MO at this moment in time. They're playing themselves much more cautiously, reserved, and generally back towards the site. They know Fav can work quickly when they want to, and they know Fav almost did before. If that grenade kill had gone the other way, then they would have had themselves in armory in a position potentially to plant. But... They've won one, and they've just got another oh, 5 to go. The wall gets taken out by the Maverick. It's a step one and a many-quoted step service. The next is probably some attention that might be paid towards, well, it's one of two options. And construction seemingly over garage. They might try and segue past that heft of utility inside there. Still, the launch would often come. Just at least, uh, or I mean garage, to at least put some pressure onto the player on the rafters. Doesn't seem to be the case for now, however. Fav is vividly droning out the entire gym bedroom area, the construction and lodgy as well. And I mean, there is an electric law out there, but there is again a way around it, which is of course going to be that Maverick. Still plenty of charges left into that blowtorch that can be used to open it up. And there's also grenades on the board, of course. Uh, a total of four. If they manage to get one right in the right spot, they should be able to potentially get rid of the electric law uh, which there is still one in pocket from, however, so they need to at least double it up. Well, the Maestro cam gone, but there's obviously still the bulletproof there with a little bit of width and a swing round. And the Elder's going to be a bit of that back line. They're trying to get that drone, but that is bulletproof, that casing, I believe. So they're not going to try and find it that easily. Here comes the chance at the next grenade. Oh, it's on it. should be able to get it. Yeah, it's just stacked on it. And oh, the Maverick might be the change. Oh, yeah, because they have the drone. The drone has pinged it out. And they've been able to find it that way. Very it's curious. Hey, well, Maverick's got some work to do, but they've got 45 seconds to try and do the rest. The blind goes underneath to make sure nobody can swing up and potentially drop them. Lily is in that position, but the second claw goes out. Lily also shot it as well underneath. Gave a bit of the game away that they are there, but they don't need to overextend 30 seconds. And, well, Afro looks like he Ooh. wants to try and take a quick drop and a drive here and hope the attention is paid elsewhere. Pressure onto Garage Door. There's the swing. There's the first. The second pops up what and they're able to find it. Afro with a huge maneuver. They lose the body on Garage and they find themselves in a three versus three. But now they have a little bit of tentative control on the site. Shin gets one more. Where can they sit? There's a lot of cameras and they got to feel some semblance of safety. They've popped back up. No verticality but Lily on the swing round should be able to get the pickup. It's he on the door and there it is. It. Fnatic just connects the dots and find their second. Still, what a play from Afro, though. Just jumping down, going for that double kill onto the red stairs. That should have been, or could have been, a lockout there. With a retake on point here. Fnatic, they live another round and bring it us up to round nine now. 
Still a match point for Fav. Still four behind, but it's starting to come back a little bit. There was a lot of time wasted by the attack from Fav. I was actually wondering about the Electro Clock because it was like, okay, so if they grenade over, they can kill it if it's on the wall itself. That's why you often see these Electro Claws placed on the uh, CCTV side of the wall. There, there's a little... Uh, little bit, you know, you can see it right here. That is currently being highlighted in that corner of CCTV because then it is not nadable, or at least it's tougher to nade. But instead they had oh. it on the wall and just, Afro just living there. But what a play it was, taking the red stairs. It's just that the diffuser was on the wrong area of the map. It should have been with them in construction. So they could have gone for a plant in cash straight away instead of losing it and a player inside of ca uh, CCTV. All right, Fnatic, as we said, they're allowed a couple, but you can build behind this. You're starting to find some momentum, some swings, and yeah, the pressure is on their side to try and make some movements, but the way you're playing with this cautiousness is eating into a lot of their time. You're trusting and forcing them into this last second execute game, and so far it's going well. Hey, it's not always the gun you see with Don. No, the M870 is not the gun that normally comes to mind, uh, especially because the SMG is quite powerful. Deals a lot of damage, low recoil, but also a low fire rate, of course. Uh, but the M870 is making uh, its approach here and there. We saw it a couple of times during the Six Invitational on Jaeger and Banda as well. And Nagiri, one of the players to rock it in his uh, record-breaking game. We managed to uh, even out the best of uh, one record with Palo. 27 kills, that was. By the way... Wall and Jacuzzi will be open up soon. Chibisu will be very well aware and playing that close with a shotgun. It makes sense when you see where they are in that bathroom. They're hoping for a jump into a cure and you can just shut them down as a result. Drones are coming through though. So they should be very well aware of that shotgun being close. Because all you need is just a single shot from the M870 to be well aware. So, in this still sitting silence, they're trying to find just a little bit of clarity in the static. And it has started to come for them, Fnatic. They've been able to try and read some of the play. They had a bit of a dance with danger there with light, but light pulls away. And that's the most important part of this is surviving. Hoping and holding that you can kind of keep Fav at arm's length for as long as possible. Another quick movement here from Fav towards that gym side towards Jacuzzi wall. They get it popped open, but this is when they sort of struggle, trying to get through the next step. Lily here, stacking up on the fight on the bottom of Garage, sort of makes their presence known, and Ramu doesn't trust taking that fight by themselves. It's awkward to be the one trying to force your way into that door, because to be honest, even if you maybe win the fight with the person on the ground floor, chances are there's someone on CC that can swing themselves out, and suddenly you're on two stories of danger. And there's a bit of worry here for the side of Fab. They're aware that someone will be inside logistics here. A ping is coming through, and the angle is being watched, but they need to find themselves a way in. And as the flashbangs get tossed into the bathroom, the breach will come in as well, but there's a thorn there. That's actually going to get the injured. Number two did not realize that there was a thorn a razor bloom going off as he placed the exothermic charge. Thought he could pull it off, but he did not, in fact. And now there is an M870 close on the corner, 30 seconds on the clock, and they need to start pushing here. Well, it does some work when they're already quite injured. Shin's gone for a drop. The spray comes over the top. They know someone's close, and they get rocked. But the second pops up. The second, they go for a little bit more width. The pings are coming through. They've been able to get themselves into the bathroom, but not for very long. There it is, Fnatic. They find their third. They get a perfect sight rotation off. They just have to do it one more time to try and pull anything out of this game. Yeah, for sure. And you see that they're starting to get... It's a sort of overhanging guillotine. It's pressure on both of them. It's pressure on Fav to just push it over the line. But it's pressure on Fnatic to make sure that they don't slip up ever. And that is an awkward bout and bit of pressure for them to find themselves sitting in. So far, the intel's been a good drive from Fnatic. They've made sure that they have the eyes on the approach. And seemingly, Fav isn't as 100%. If I'm going to compliment Fav on how well they read Fnatic's drone game here on the actual putting pressure on the site intel game, they seem a little bit lost as to where the entirety of it is. Sure, they can find a bubble and pop it or two, but the bulletproofs just keep being out of the corner of their eye. Yeah, that's it, right? Like, they're trying to get their drones in, but they're either stopped by the Mew Jammers that are located next to these doors, or they're stopped by Evil Eyes holding off from a long range. And where they have managed to take out some of those pieces of utility, 
it never was really enough to get a full and clear picture of the defense itself. And we have Afro then jumping down from the roof into the CCTV wall and getting a double kill. Still a small mistake gets made where the diffuser gets lost inside CCTV. The, the one area that you do not really have under control at that point. Either way. Grenades are being tossed in to get rid of the Mew Jammer. The Exothermic will go off, and that will mark the very first step. It is up to the top floor, however, as there is that three members of Fnatic currently out there. The site is not. That's all the way in the basement. There's no need for Fnatic to completely clear this all out, but of course they are not fully aware of this current setup that they're using. So, what is the read going to be here from the side of Fav? Do they try and hunt down those three players on the top floor and all that utility that's otherwise been expended? It seems like they're sort of hot set on it for now. And with the utility that they've already used at this point, Fnatic just has to sort of keep themselves a bit safe. Drops two drones, pretty much, and pulls themselves back. And there it is. Shin had the cutoff. Almost found the second there, the spray through. They'd got themselves in a good position to catch anyone that fled. And now, well... They've got to try and get the remaining bodies back down towards the site. There's still a lot of work to do. A minute 30 and a single player pulled out as well as bits of utility, sure, but the cost is going to be actually paid onto the site itself. We now have four back at the site here for Fnatic and there's 80 seconds on that clock. Fav, they need to start working on opening up everything as quickly as they possibly can, but they won't until they know everything is safe. And that's what these drones are doing. These next 20 seconds will be about getting all the information they possibly can on the first and top floor to ensure themselves that they are indeed safe. As they're now getting into these positions to start opening up these hatches mainly, the triple wall, however, is soft onto the church side. I'm quite, like, I'm not sure if they are aware of this. If they are, we could just as well see the buck just open that up and provide a clear opening into the site behind the bar to go for a plant. Fav here, they're trying to make the best of getting that early body. They know they don't have a huge amount of time, and you can see a little bit of a shake between who is quite doing what the buck almost skeleton keying the sledge in the commotion, 30 seconds, and you gotta try and make sure that you keep that solidity. You've been able to get that early one. You've been able to get that opening body, and here as the drop starts to come through on Moto, they don't last very long. Light, maybe that was the reveal that the wall was entirely soft, and it puts Typon in a bit of a tricky situation. Whether he goes for a bit of a pre-spray, it's Meryu that picks up the next, and there it is, over the top, lost the connection. It's round, Meryu is able to get a double here, and they've absolutely torn them up on the approach. They knew where they needed to stack up. They've just pulled themselves back and this has been fantastically played by Fnatic. Yeah, Fnatic is just doing their thing here. Fav is just way too slow. There's strange decisions coming out with the Diffuser going in first and dying, which forces the rest of the attackers to try and play around it, try and recover that whilst they're going for frags. It's just not working out for them. And I think this is the most important round here. CCTV cash. This one needs to be won by Fav if they want to win this game with a three-pointer. If they don't get this one, a uh, relatively easy attack normally where you would open up the garage, you open up the CC wall, and you try and go for a default plant, it is as simple as it gets almost. It, it's 101 Siege. Of course, it's difficult. There is going to be Electro Claws here and there, but you have that Maverick. You can open it up. And as they're bringing the Montaigne, that should be for their mezzanines, for the rafters, to just push him up there, get rid of the player that's out there, and see if you can follow up on it. Because Fnatic right now, they're, they're passive enough on their defense to, or, or let's say, they're aggressive enough for Fav to having to drone everything, but they're passive enough afterwards to make sure that there's just no time and no openings for the side of Fav to get anything done. And now CCTV cash, round number 11. It's four to six. Fnatic is and has returned the 06 to a 4-6 here. Looking to go for a reverse sweep within this best of one. Now it seems like indeed they're going for a garage take here. It's gonna be uh, the question whether or not the uh, Maverick can come around and open up the wall for them. Camera's being taken care of as well, so a bit of utility. Go I was kind of confused. How does he have an SMG and a C4 out at the same time? It was, it was lights, SMG, and double, a C4. Double stack. It's a double stack. It's a double stack. It's, uh, you know, the totem pole. The classic maneuver in FPS gaming, and they're going to see if they can make it work there on that connection. Rami, 
He's going to see if he can put the pressure on Taipon. As you said, Monty the Man Mountain is going to try and start a bit of an approach here from the bottom of Garage. There is still some chance of some damage, but how long are they going to see if they can catch out the players from this side? Lily, looks like they're going for a big rotation underneath there, reading that there's huge work coming through in the C4. We just saw it pop off and not quite get the catch that it wanted to. Now, with Light seeing if they can try and reestablish some hold and some control, they've sort of got the pieces together that it's entirely coming over from here for now, and Lily's going to see if they can be the stop. And there's going to be a shield, so it's going to be difficult for Lily to uh, to pick up that kill. At least the pings are coming through. He is inside panel two. Try and get that grenade out there as he's moving swiftly and about. A C4 comes through, and that could be the kill onto Ramu here. Actually, no, it doesn't pop. He's allowed to live. He's allowed to stay repelled up onto that window. My question here is, however, where is the grenades? They're not really trying to take care of the player inside the rafters. They need to get that control. They have two operators with grenades, none of them currently in position. Typhoon is just standing here trying to gather information, and no one is there to respond. You see, the Finca is currently repelling up. The Afro is inside a stock. No one is there to help Typhoon. They need to get this control. Why are they not trying to get it? It doesn't make sense to me. Well, now they're in the site. Number two is just entirely blinded his way through. There's a body and a player on the rafters they need to get rid of. And Mariu goes down. Finally, they have some solidity. They've wasted it out. But there's the drop. Number two, he stops up. And he can't quite get the confusion on where anybody is. Yura is able to strike. But Taipon finally ends it. Ramu was on the cover, but nothing else he could offer as a modicum of support. The Monty, he's been able to get himself stepped up. And Afro is going to see if he can try and slink his way in. But there's players coming in from lounge underneath. The shotgun is opening up, so Taipon cannot get a transition onto the site itself with any cleanliness. Although, the shotgun doesn't quite get the full connection. The smoke over the rotation, 15 seconds, and he doesn't quite pick up the diffuser. He gets caught out. Taipon still trying to drive it. Ramu is still outside, really just trying to find his way through. There's one on red. There it is! Fav! somehow pull the pieces together in a very scrappy end. It was almost 6-0 to 6-5. The difference was a couple of seconds and a couple of stray bullets. But they just get it over the line. They're lucky they did because I was about to